Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. We're going to try something a little bit different. We're going for a vlog style video. Let me know in the comments down below whether you think this works and what you'd like to see differently on the channel. So we've got plenty of how-to videos coming up in the future. So I've got some mods already sitting in the garage waiting to go on the F56. We've got a couple of tweaks and repairs for the R53 as well. So plenty of how-tos. It's not something we're going to move away from. We're just going to add to the content on the channel. So today's video is going to cover basically the history um, of car ownership for myself. So all the way from the beginning when I passed my test, all the way through to now and the two cars that I have and everything in between. So my interest in cars really didn't start till I was 19, 20. So I passed my driving test, um, regularly using my sister's Fiesta at the time. Um, and after passing my test, needed to get something while I was at university to shove me backwards and forwards. Looking for something cheap and cheerful, so I was looking at sort of at the time around sort of M Reg Fiesta, so that that sort of newer, newer rounder shaped Fiesta at the time. Uh, I think that Saxos, 106s, those sort of type cars at the time, they were quite popular, and you could get them in one litre, so that was perfect for cheap insurance. However, a relative had a car for sale, which I hadn't thought of, hadn't considered at the time, but when I heard about how cheap it was, I thought I've got to go for that and try something a little different. So it was actually a Fiat Seicento Sporting. So in broom yellow, so it was bright. Everyone used to call it the uh, the washing machine, but it was perfect first little car. So 1.1 engine, so not the fastest in the world, um, but got me around, had four seats, and super cheap on insurance compared to some of the other cars I was looking at. So at the time, wasn't really into cars in terms of modding. The car came with some bits already. Um, so the previous owner had fitted some Oz wheels, so some aftermarket wheels, k and intake, um, and also rated the sort of discs and pads around the car. So we had a few little mods, though actually thinking about it, I did fit some a bath um, side skirts to the car. So that was the first part I ever painted my first experience with a body shop. And anyone knowing um, body shops, you really have to find a good one. And back at, back in the day, I didn't know any good ones. Didn't have a great experience, lots of excuses in terms of the final product. Um, but I stuck it on the car anyway, and I didn't have sort of the high level or high standards that I have today in terms of my car. So for me, back then, that was great. So that car got me through university, brilliant. And then I moved on to um, my first job in Barclays, or first full-time job, should I say, because I had part-time jobs before then. Uh, and wanted a car that was a lot more comfortable for commuting. So I think the Seicento had gone through um, a couple of head gaskets and other issues. So it wasn't the most reliable. So I was looking for something a bit more reliable. So went back to my uh, searching for a Fiesta ST at the time. So the new Fiesta ST had come out. I was looking at potentially buying one of those brand new um, or second hand. And yeah, they, they were great cars and would have done perfect at the time. And searching through Auto Trader, never considered a Mini um, in my life. However, an R53 Cooper S, the dark silver one, that was my first Mini. That came up and had amazing spec compared to any other Fiesta I'd seen. There was lots of sort of CD player at the time, um, radio, electric windows, all the comfort, th those sort of elements of the car that you just didn't get on the Fiesta ST. So I thought, you know what, I'll go and look at it. Went and looked at it, drove it, realized at the time I knew nothing about minis, realized it had got a supercharger as well on the engine and fell in love with it instantly. So literally it was the first car I looked at and I know it goes completely against all the uh, the rules in terms of buying used cars, etc. But it was the first car that I'd seen and it was literally, I put a deposit down then, um, went and got the cash out of the bank and actually purchased the car there and then drove away with it. I didn't even think of considering any cars after seeing that one. It was absolutely perfect. Okay, so in terms of the R53, many of you have probably seen it on my Instagram, Facebook, Mini Talk, Mini Foo, Mini Addiction, etc. So dark silver, had a Union Jack roof at the time and S-spoke alloy wheels. At that point, again, had no plans for modification for the car. Hadn't done, obviously, anything before, more than a stereo and a few other electrical bits. And decided um, that it needed some new brakes and pads at the time. I think that's why I got it a little bit cheaper, because it needed a few service bits. Took it um, to, at the time, Think Mini. So Dave over at Think Mini, uh, well-respected in the Mini community. Um, 
and went and saw him and got him to do the uh, the pads and discs. And while while I was there, I actually met some. Um, I think it was Jane, Andy, Mario, so now lifelong friends. Um, at the time, didn't realise that. Um, who asked me to go to? I think it was Himley Hall at the time. So that was my first ever experience of a car show at all, let alone mini show. Um, went there and was wowed by all the modified cars there. Absolutely brilliant. So seeing all the different suspension, wheels, body kits you could get for these cars, I just didn't realise there was so much you could customise. Um, and that, that's where I got bit by the bug in terms of car modifications. So I think the first thing I went and did was purchase a Mini Mania air intake, which now knowing, knowing what I know wasn't the best at the time. But for me back then, it was something I wanted to do, brought it. And actually it was the first sort of performance part I'd ever fitted myself to a car. I was so excited and proud of myself at the time when I did it. So I think went through sort of aero side skirts, things like that, getting whether it's Mini Matt or Dave, I think Mini to fit parts at the time. Didn't really do much myself um, until I met uh, Richard Everett and Rich Phillips and that can completely changed my life forever and um, they gave me the confidence to actually work on my own cars um, and actually for anyone that knows our history that actually led to the creation of Orange Performance um, which Ollie has now taken over and doing an amazing job at running that and it's going from strength to strength so good luck to you Ollie on that one and thanks for looking after me um, over the years with parts. So yeah, so the R53 had um, three looks. So there was the original look where it had the S spokes and things like that. Then I brought some silver BBS RZ wheels, I think at the time. And we'll show a picture up there. Then we had a second look, which is where I went for the, the same wheels, but hadn't powder coated in black. We had some black and orange stripes put up the car. Lots of orange highlights, so there's orange brakes, orange wing mirrors smaller supercharger pulley, I think it had a GP intercooler at the time, Miltec exhaust. And um, it's really starting to get into the obviously the both the looks and the performance side of things there. And um, and that look was one of the favourite looks. I know there's a lot of people that, that that car inspired to go a bit different, go a bit bolder in terms of the colours that they were using. And um, but after a while got bored of that look, wanted to change it up. So I went for the other look that I'll show up now. And that's actually um I took the BBS wheels, same again, so I think I owned them in three different colours. So I had them silver originally, then black, and then actually went for a candy purple that Sherlock um, Powder Coats in Birmingham did for me. It was a sort of one-off colour they didn't really use very often. And they made up this sort of um, candy purple just for my set of wheels and it looked spot on and it, it really got the car noticed. Everything else was more muted, so we got rid of the orange. Um, there was a lot more black um, and a couple of gold highlights here and there um, but the purple I think I had done on the wheel and the cabrio braces at the time just to, to add a little flavour into the engine bay not over the top and there's a there's a really good picture and I'll show that up on the screen now of where I had the purple wheels um, and some of the highlights in the engine it just looked for me spot on and that was my favourite look on the car in the end um, but again me being me I like to change my cars like a, a lot um, and that, I think that was probably the car I'd owned the longest, that R53. Um, but wanted something a bit different, a bit newer, a few mod, more mod cons, because that car sort of was getting for a few years, sort of six or seven years old. Um, so I actually went and brought, uh, I think it was a, a year old, R56 uh, JCW hatchback in laser blue. Literally the perfect spec I wanted, um, fitted JCW Recaro seats to it. Um, was about to order suspension and everything when a bit of a, a life changing event happened so I actually found out my girlfriend at the time was pregnant so um, I sort of went into a bit of a panic mode and somehow ended up going and purchasing a Nissan Qashqai so it was the Tecna version now, don't get me wrong brilliant car perfect family car at the time for one child had all the space you could need massive boot it was the Tecna version so it had the heated seats the sat nav Bluetooth music, all, all those sort of mod cons that you need, reverse camera, etc. And it was a brilliant car and would have been perfect, but it just wasn't me. I wasn't happy at the time with the car, but it was one of those where I felt I needed to buy it, needed to have that family car, because Emma at the time didn't drive, and um, so it was all on me in terms of getting us around as a family. Um, however, Emma could see that I just wasn't happy with that car, and about a week before Sky was born, I joked and said, well, 
Um, if the push chair could fit in a mini's boot, could I go get one? And I looked up and there was a JCW um, mini clubman for sale at the time, laser blue, perfect spec. And we joked and said, yeah, if, if it fits, let's switch cars. So I drove straight to the local mini dealership, found a mini clubman and made sure I rammed that push chair into the boot of that car. So I took the parcel shelf out, the second layer of flooring that you get in the mini clubman and actually you made sure that that push chair would fit. It did and to fair play to Emma, she stuck by a word. We literally jumped in the Nissan Qashqai, drove up to Blackburn a week before Sky was born. So I think Emma was actually um, suffering at the time with sickness, etc., through pregnancy. Um, and we actually drove back home with a JCW Clubman, a lazy blue, perfect spec at the time, had everything um, you could want in it. The only thing missing really was the seats. Um, but within days of owning that, Rich Phillips and I drove down to Norfolk Mini, um, so Neil and the guys down there did an amazing job fitting the Recaros for me and actually programming because I struggled in the Midlands to find a mini dealership that would actually program uh, a JCW Clubman to work um, and have no errors with the JCW seats. So the guys were fantastic, did that at, at a drop of a hat and got that sorted for me. And, <laughs> and that car for me was a brilliant car, started to modify it and that's where disaster hit. So actually I didn't realise that car was a press car for Mini. So yes it was well maintained but it was also passed to many journalists and it was only when I found photos of it and the number plate online in many magazines and online tests um, that I realised that that car had actually had quite a hard life even though it had got about 20,000 miles on the clock maybe not even that, um, it had a hard life, which led to all the issues that I had with it. So I think in one year, I'd gone through seven timing chain tensioners, and this is all done under warranty at Mini at the time. They did look after me, um, but they did also struggle. So one of the times they didn't fit a timing chain tensioner uh, correctly, and we actually had issues where valves hit pistons and we had a destroyed top half to the engine all fixed under warranty so I can't slate Mini for that they fixed all the issues that came up um, but for me although after that I fitted the Volks gold wheels it had a remap at the time up to about 270 brake horsepower upgraded into intercooler upgraded uh, coils all those sort of things um, but the problem I had with it is I just felt every time I drove it that something was going to go wrong. It always felt like it was a disaster around the corner with that car. Um, so I decided to um, park that car out and actually move on and, and look at something else. And actually went for something completely different. So it was my first move away in three cars to uh, a non-mini. And I actually went through a Pearl White GT86. That's something completely different. I had always had a love for Japanese cars, but never owned one. It was my first sort of towing the ocean in terms of Japanese cars um, and what a great car it was um, the only problem was it's the same as everyone says underpowered um, but perfect handling it was so easy to drift literally driving it home never driven a real world drive car I was drifting it around islands now it probably felt more dramatic in the car than what it looked like outside but for me I felt like <laughs> I actually managed to pull off a few half decent looking drifts around islands uh, on the way back home um, that was for me it was an important car I didn't own it for long I think six months maybe um, but for me it will always have a special memory in my um, in my heart because it was the last car I worked on with Rich Phillips um, before he died um, rest in peace Rich but no for me that that will always I'll always have a link in the car because I remember sitting on the uh, him sitting on the driveway with me. He couldn't he wasn't well enough to work on the car, but he still wanted to be there um, and be involved. Great car, like I say, changed some of the interior bits, but for me, it just wasn't as fast as the Clubman. And to get it anywhere near the Clubman, not only was I going to have to fit a turbo or supercharger kit, those cars aren't uh, those engines aren't any good for sort of 280, 300 brake plus. And um, that's when you start have to forge in the engines, just like the Mini. Um, so I decided that I was going to go for something different again um, 
and ended back up, surprise, surprise, in a Mini. So what I had, what actually happened was, I've never been a fan of the F56, um, but when I was looking for a replacement for the uh, GT86, I actually saw James Jolly's F56, and it was one of the first in the country that had all the sort of the looks mods done, so he'd fit a JCW kit, brakes at the time, got aftermarket wheels, coilovers on it. So he'd done a really good um, work with the look of the car, not so much the performance. I think it got an e exhaust and an intake on it, but that was, that was it at the time. Um, so I actually decided to switch and go for that. So it actually worked really well. So I drove up to um, Leeds at the time and dropped the GT86 off to the new owner. Emma followed me up in her car at the time and we carried on driving up to Newcastle to meet James, did the exchange, paid for the car, and I drove back in my uh, new F56. Couldn't be happier with it, made a great sound. The, uh, the Remus Valvetronic exhaust, which I have on my F56 now as well, and um, probably the best sounding exhaust, I'd say, for the Mini F56, really pleased with it at the time. But wanted to up the performance, knew the car was capable of more. I mean, they're 200 brake as Cooper S. Um, for the factory, but that's never enough um, for those that know me, so always want to tinker and play with the car. So that grey F56 at the time had white wheels, white roof, looked spot on, um, went to Airtech to have, for them to develop their intercoolers, it went to Scorpion and they developed their downpipes, so both the catted and decapped version, as well as their catback exhaust. It went to Manic and it was actually the first car that Manic used to develop their mapping for the Mini F56. Um, did a cracking job. I think they got it up to 300 brake horsepower and um, was the last iteration of the map that I had on the car um, And was really pleased with the car the performance. It was so fast I've put some clip in, clips in now of it down the drag strip at Santa Pod um, Car was spot-on the problem I had was all my cars before were standard cars that I'd modified myself the problem I had with the F56 was it always felt like it was James Jolly's car. People would always ask, oh, is that R99's F56? Are you James Jolly? No, I'm not. Um, so I did try and go for a new look on the car to try and lose that. So I actually had the wheels done in um, bronze at the time. I also had the roof done. So uh, I had the roof body colored rather than to get rid of the white, because I think the white thunder gray on that car was actually sort of iconic. And everyone knew that car because of that color combination because a lot of people would go with black wheels rather than white. So yeah, so I went with bronze with the darker roof, colour coded all the, the interior bits and went piano black with a lot of it as well. Just really change up the look of that car. Um, but ultimately, I still had that, that niggling feeling in the back of my head um, that it just wasn't um, my project. I hadn't started it from afresh and everyone knew it as someone else's car. So I had to change, change it up and I actually sold that car as it was, fully modified. Um, so yeah, and also, while I had that car, I actually purchased another GT86. It was an orange GT86 that came with tons of imported parts, and I had a mindset that I was gonna turbo that car. However, um, saw it as a quick flip in the end. Took, took all the uh, Japanese parts off it, uh, people couldn't get hold of and sold them for a profit. Put the car back to standard, again, sold that on um, and made a profit on that. So that was a quick flip in terms of that car. Never had the time really to fall in love with it. Only drove it a couple of times and it sat in the garage while I worked on it, put it back to stock and then sold it on. I also purchased uh, the R53 that I own today. So great little car that was, um, super bargain. The, the owner at the time, it was blue, had lots of issues with it that he couldn't fix, lots of niggles. I decided to take it on as a bit of a project, got it super cheap, got it home, and within a couple of hours had fixed most of those little niggles. I think the guy at the time didn't really know what he was doing and struggled to fix it. Um, for me, they were really simple things. Bodywork had some problems, um, and it ended up getting resprayed. Yeah, in the Porsche RS Green that you see today on it, obviously changed all, all the suspension because it had done a lot of miles, I think it had done 90,000 miles, coming up to 10 years old. So changed a lot of parts on it um, to refresh it, renew, 
um, and Millsy Autos, Jason over there, what an amazing job he did. We worked together on that car. He did um, a lot of the work. I helped with stripping it down and putting some of the parts back on uh, to the car and rebuilding it to what you see today. And I'm actually going to do an in-depth video and a walk around on that car and talk you through the history of it, so I won't go into too much detail now. So for those that know me, um, there was a big life event that happened a couple of years ago. So my fiance at the time actually was diagnosed with breast cancer and I needed a real distraction from what was going on. Obviously I had to look after her, look after the children, keep my job going as well. Um, and the big distraction for me was my cars. And I made a bold decision then to go out and actually buy um, the Ford Mustang. So I sold the F56, I actually brought um, a brand new Grabber Blue uh, 5 litre Mustang GT. What a car that was, absolutely amazing. It's one of those cars that you get stopped everywhere you go, people take photos. I couldn't literally fill up a petrol station without someone having a conversation with me while I was filling up and then often people sort of remarking on it as walking back to it. Um, great car, super fast, rear wheel drive, a lot of power and I think to be honest, um, that step up in power with real wheel drive. I probably did scare myself a couple of times in terms of trying to take islands the same speed that would take them in a mini. <laughs> and you just can't do that, especially in the wet. It's a completely different ball game. And those two times I brought a GT86, I probably should have brought a higher powered car. That's really the step away from the mini I needed and that sort of next step up. Um, love that car, um, however, I started to work from home at that point and I think it did about 800 miles in a year and it was great and it's fantastic, I can say I own it. I did some great bits for charity in that car as well. Um, but it just, it was a wasted car in terms of it just sat on the driveway and didn't go anywhere. So I decided to make the hard decision to get rid of that car um, before I could really do any modifications to it, but what a car it was as standard. Um, and, and got rid of that car and didn't really have a need for a daily driver anymore so that's why the R53 went the way it did, went more extreme because I wasn't daily in it so it didn't need to be a comfortable car so it went cages, harnesses, all those sort of things that I'd never done or dreamed of doing in my old dark silver R53 that I had as my second car. Um, I wanted to revisit uh, the Mini um, world again while I had the R53 and decided it was a toss up between a Mini Coupe, a Countryman, a Paceman and um, when a Clubman came up and this it was a Coupe S Club, Clubman, felt sorry for it, it was the cheapest in the country by a country mile, uh, rough around the edges but the engine was spot on, interior was perfect, bodywork was awful so that was the, the red, um, chilli red Coupe S uh, R55 Clubman I purchased and again that was a build I did and um, for those that followed it on Instagram did lots of modifications in a very short amount of time and um, went for the yellow cage lots of engine mods the sort of intake intercooler etc changed the wheels yeah big yellow speed brakes amazing car but never fell in love with it it was one of those again it was a, a distraction so while M was getting over um, chemo etc again it was something for me to build and play with and keep me busy and um, for those downtime moments when Emma was in hospital and um, I just had time to kill great car but again like I said I didn't feel enough with it so decided to take the jump into another car and um, so sold that on and now the owner's got it and he's doing an amazing job putting in the engine that that car deserved because the suspension, the looks and everything was spot on on that car and it just needed the engine build and that's what the new owner's doing. So I'll put a photo and a, a link up here to his Instagram if you want to see that car, still lives on. And that's where I went for the new F56 that I've got on the driveway now. So it was a couple of years old um, and yeah, it's completely standard at the time um, and I've dived straight into that. So what have I done so far? coilovers and um, changed the looks of it so it had color coded arches at the time it's a factory JCW 2016 plate um, when I brought that I purchased private plates for both cars just so um, had that consistency and it's something I always wanted to do and never owned um, it's got the dual lag style wing on it um, done lots of color coding to get rid of the chrome which is a common theme if you look at all the minis I've owned all of all of lost that, that chrome around it. It's got um, carbon intake, 
uh, air tac intercooler all stuff i fit for myself and videos that are on the channel now so again i'll do a walk around an in-depth video on that car i don't want to go into it too much detail uh on the driveway so we've got the r53 the silver white f56 and we've also got a range rover sport which is the family car hopefully that video was something a little different leave any feedback below if you haven't already please like the video subscribe to the channel and there's plenty more comment content coming for you soon and um, we've got plenty of how-to videos like i say for the r53 and f56 so thanks guys again for taking the time out to watch the video we'll see you in the next one Bit. And there's actually little holes on the wall.